I put the cylinder back down for a second here because we need to work on some of the components that we forgot here uh, as we were tightening our transmission cover and putting our transmission gear and everything. We forgot the very uh, hole. There's a hole in here that you can see here that actually is supposed to be filled up uh, pretty much with a brake uh, guide. Even though we don't have the brake shoes, it still needs to be filled up. You can see there the hole right there. You can see all the gear is probably in there as well. That's one of the gear sprockets there. Watch if I, if I turn this, you'll probably be able to see it. Let's see if I can turn it and hold the camera at the same time. Okay. There you go, get the light on there. Okay, so you can see. I can try to turn it without blocking the camera out here. But it's kind of tricky. I think I can do it. There we go. Okay, so I'm turning the gear, which I'm turning the rear, rear axle here. It's a little harder to do, actually. Or let me just try to see if I can turn the fan. Everything else should go mechanism wise. Okay, so the fan is not going to turn it, but the Kickstarter should if it's connected. Yeah. Okay, but there's the gear there, right there. You can see it now? Alright, so we actually have to fill that up. We were missing a, a spot for it here. So now we can go ahead and uh, identify what we're missing from all the components. We're actually missing a few things. Uh, pretty much for the left case here, it didn't come with a bolt here to secure it onto the mount of the, the frame of the bike scooter. So now we gotta take it from it now. That way we won't forget it. Comes with several washers, a couple washers here. Again, this is the old left frame uh, from the our QMJ. Uh, pretty much uh, left uh, crankcase so we're just gonna go ahead and unscrew this now that way we'll have it we won't forget it this is about 12 millimeter but we don't need to screw it uh, in yet we're gonna wait for so a pretty long screw it goes pretty much as a an inch Feels like forever. There you go. See, it's coming out from the other end. That, or I'm just going very slowly. There you go. We got this screw now. So we pretty much just examined this. We don't need any other parts from this left crankcase, I believe. The bushings were already provided. They got bushings here. However, we do need to get the the rear uh, bushing here for from our uh, right crankcase, as well as that bolt here that secures not only the brake shoe, but also pretty much secures the gear oil from uh, leaking out. And this is how it looks like in the front end. So we need to remove it from the back end. Again, it's a, pretty much a 12 millimeter. So we're gonna take that off as well. And all we need right now is from the bushing as well, but we'll work on the bushing a little later. But we definitely need to gear this one out. Just afraid that now that we're gonna remove the gasket back, hopefully, we can still salvage that gasket that we put in. We're gonna have to uh, pretty much break the um, thread lock because we already have it set for almost 24 hours now. So let's go ahead and put this one back in and have it ready for preparation for when we uh, install it back onto our crankcase. I mean our, um... so here we go. We can scoot it, you know what, we can just just so we can have it right here, we can just screw it this way and we can move it back when, we, when we're ready to really install it. This will also help it support so it won't actually put pressure here on our uh, oil funnel for the crankcase. So if it happens to fall this way, it'll help support it a little bit. All right, we don't have to screw it all the way in, just, just enough right here. That should be good enough. That will remember to use that. But that screw is external, the one screw that disappointing that we forgot was this screw right here, which is very important because that actually probably has a an O-ring as well to seal the oil in there. So we're gonna go ahead and get ready to take that off. So this one we won't need anymore. Uh, all right, let's open our tool here. I believe it's a 12 millimeter socket. That will probably work on that one. So here it is, we have a 12 millimeter. Make sure there's a 12 millimeter there. Okay, try and get the resolution here for you. 
so you can see. There we go. It's 12 millimeter. See it barely, but it's 12. Yep, there it goes. Okay, so we got the 12 millimeter now. I'm gonna put it in there. We need extension now. We're gonna go ahead and I'll put this on my lap here. That way you can see up close. So here's it. We're gonna unscrew this bolt, and that should actually release everything else. We get a socket driver for it. I get a long one that way you can see it. See if I can get extension. Pretty good size. Let me see. Find an extension for that one. There we go. This will definitely work. We don't need the small extension, we need the big extension. So this will work. We just gotta take out a small adapter for it because we need it for there we go okay we got the extension now to be able to clear pretty much the casing okay lefty loosey righty tidy there we go we're gonna get a socket in there okay we're gonna go and break it might be a little tough. I'm gonna go and put it on, on the floor here. Put some pressure on it. Try to get the camera angle as well. You guys can see it. Okay. See it there. There we go. There's that bolt there. Okay, can I break it loose? My feet on there. Or at least my feet on there. There we go. Try not to cover the angle. Yeah, it's it's pretty good tight in there. So let me see if I can get more leverage. Coming back this way. And go tilt it on the side. I push down on it like take out the wheel wax. That's a car. Okay. Got a little bit more leverage here. So we're trying to break to the left. Okay. There we go. We held it in place. See it right there. really tight in there. I think we might, I think this side might be spinning eventually. Oh no, it's not spinning, so it's good. So I want to make sure that the back part right here is not spinning, and it's not spinning, so we are good. We got that down. Go ahead and loosen it all the way. Yeah, this is what we needed to uh, seal our transmission gear. It's unfortunate we have to actually uh, take out the whole uh, uh, clutch CBT and everything back just to get this but that's okay because we're gonna put our dowel pins anyway We need to put the two dowel pins that we needed for the CBT cover so that will work That's one positive out of it that we need to open the CBT cover for that as well But it would have been nice that uh, this wasn't so external but Here we go. It's coming out All right And there it is. That's the bolt for it to probably push it Give it a little thump. Wow, it looks like it's stuck on there. And I don't see any kind of D-ring on the bolts itself, so it must be just from this side. Of it. This is very secured in there. Okay, we don't want to damage it. So let's see how we can actually... So I think we can probably knock it loose. But we can't do it this side, unfortunately. So I'm going to see if I can actually just put it here on my lap and kind of knock it that way. So here we go. 
I need to do is get something that it cannot. This might work. This gives it a little like a centimeter off the ground, going from the opposite direction. I'm going to try to use the end of this, which just give it a little bit of a centimeter off the ground. Not a lot, I don't think, but maybe it just needs a little bit to break it off. So we're going to go ahead and try that. I'm going to go and get a mallet. Seems like the mallet's pretty useful now. Okay, I'm going to try to slug with that mallet. Hopefully, you can see it just drop right off. We'll see. I hope you can get that angle there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is try to hit it with a mallet. Hopefully, this just drop right off. There we go. This side is a little bit more solid than this side. So, let's go with the solid side. Mm, doesn't doesn't seem like it's all right this is like it's vibrating it's unreal how tight it is in there it must be some kind of ring in there I'm not sure if it's supposed to be screwed out I could try to get my vice grip but I really don't think it's supposed to be screwed out maybe I can just kind of break it out so let's go and get some vice grips and see if that will actually do the trick okay let's go and get some pair of vice grips here take care of that because there's no other way i can see it's supposed to actually fit your uh your shoe there but it's just too too small, this is a huge vice grip, but it might work. Okay, we'll put our eight millimeter on that side. We're sure gonna still follow the same pattern, lefty loosey, righty tidy. And can open it, has a hook on the back. Okay, that's good. Maybe it gives more leverage here. Try what we need. Okay, that's not going to do it. It's too loose. Give it a good squeeze. Try, I guess I'm going to knock it loose or break it loose. If it is a thread that is actually going, that will be interesting. Okay, there we go. Nope. Yeah, this thing is really stuck good. It's from the heat and everything. I think it's just an o-ring that actually is it's in there so we actually take a look at our original one I don't really see a thread let's just let's just take a look at it closely to see if there is a thread if there's no thread and we can just pretty much knock it loose so let's check it out see there's no thread it's just pretty much a whole piece here with the o-ring yeah there's no thread there is none. Yeah, I see. I see it now. There is no thread at all. Let's see if I can get the light to ricochet for you. Yeah, I see, I don't see a thread at all. So it's actually just supposed to come out. So let's do our best here. And try to get it out. Just pretty much hammer it out somehow so we'll keep on trying and then you gotta also make sure okay there we go and try to hammer it out now don't want to damage it uh, so we're going to get a socket perhaps that oh well, this might work so we're going to use a little small here It'll hold it in place, or it's too small. This is too big. We need something that will not force it. Well, maybe we can just force it slightly. Okay, so we're gonna do our best here. We're just gonna use one of the edge of our sockets. Wish I had another one that might actually wrap around it a little bit more better. 
but I think not having it too perfectly in there might be even better. So let's go ahead and try to tap it. There we go. You can feel the whole place. Give me a pretty good hard thump, and I don't see it budging at all. It's interesting. There we go. We'll do it again. Whatever's securing it. not killing the thread I think it'll be fine I'm surprised I can't even knock it loose how is this supposed to get back there's no thread whatsoever I guess yeah it's only held by the o-ring very strong okay so Keep going here at it. I'm gonna try to see. You know what I can do is I can use the um, what do you call that? I can take it to our. That's what I could probably do. I can take it to our 12 ton compressor and just be really careful and make sure I only compress that part. This might work to compress, I guess. Or it might square the whole. Yeah, this might work. We'll see if we can just compress it out of there. Okay, so I'll do, I'll go and compress it. I'll put this in our compressor and I'll let you know if it just compresses it out only. But again, we don't want to damage anything else. We just want to compress it out. So let me go and put this pause. Uh, there's not enough light, unfortunately, over there. Maybe I can swing light over to see me do as well. So let's see if we can do that. Set up the lights. We're going to take our 12 ton compressor on it and hopefully that'll do the trick. So there we go. Bear with me, the light goes out. Oh, there we go. Got some light. Not very much light, but it's still light. Okay. okay so, what we're going to do is we are going to compress it. There we go. You guys can see a little bit more. Okay, so we're gonna do is gonna put it here. Now the crankcase, we definitely don't want to damage it, but uh, worse from the worst, we we still need that that part so we can put in our new one. I'm just surprised how tight it is in there. Okay, so here we go. I think we got everything we need, and we gotta be really careful. We don't want that ricochet. We're gonna set in the spot. We need to make sure that it has enough room to drop freely. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set it up, get it tight first, and then I'm gonna go ahead and pretty much I can wrap the camera here. You guys can see as it goes. So let's see if I can wrap the camera at an angle here. It's gonna slowly come. Great about this tripod, it's flexible. But we gotta be really careful though, because the legs keep on falling apart too easily. Yeah, I don't feel too secure about the, having the tripod in here as well. So let me go ahead and get this in the right position. And All right, we got the camera angle here for you. And we're gonna try to do it again. We're gonna try to go ahead and pretty much engage it out. Somehow. Okay, we wanna make sure it's, the thing about it, it's not very secure. We, end up, we might end up damaging other parts or we can take out the X. 
sure that whatever the side that it's supported by. And this might work just beautifully. Okay, so we're going to take it straight. No X. And we're going to go and get our... Let's go and get our jack stick here. Take it first into compression mode. And we, like we got ways to go. Wish I had a little longer extension. Maybe I should get a longer extension, huh? Let me go get a longer extension version of this one. Might not be better. I'm gonna put this on pause. Okay, I found one tool. It's pretty much one of our Phillips here. It has a long extension. So I'll put the, the hollow front against the solid piece here. And I'll put a solid bottom with for a socket to go in the driver onto the, the thread itself. And that might just go ahead and do it. So we still have to go ahead and uh, jack as much as we can. And let me go and get that jack set again. Oh, let me check in here. Alright. Here we go. We can get as long as as we can. See where it's gonna actually fit in. There we go. I believe it can only go a certain amount of length before it starts. Pretty much, is, I think this has quite a ways to go still. Alright. I'm just surprised how heavy it is or how hard it is to break that bolt in. Okay, it's so almost there. We also want to inspect the bottom and make sure it's not uh, causing any crush areas. Okay, we're going to go and see if this is enough here. Not yet. About another inch or so, we should meet it. Almost. And once we meet it, it'll hold this place. Almost. Let's see where we're at. Another half an inch. So that be it almost, almost there. So we're gonna go start. Fairly close. Okay. Okay. Now it's not laying us in. So that means a good sign. Let's go and just move it up just a little bit. best here. I'm gonna balance this as well. I'm gonna try to balance this as well as but once I get on there it feels you know you don't want you want to make sure the groove is not forcing it to you know, so everything is kind of flush that's what we want because we don't want to damage the case. This case can still be reused to build uh, pretty much anything up to probably the most probably a 200 cc if we board so, be a still 50, uh, 54 millimeter stud but we can still make it work for almost anything okay it's almost there we're going to start aligning it We want to get to the center. The center is better. That way it doesn't want to twist off. There we go. Okay, I'm holding down the thread. Okay, there we go. It's pretty much tight in there. Let's see what it does. There we go. I feel it gripping. There we go. Wow, it's coming off. Show you guys hopefully the crankcase doesn't slip you can see right there the pressure is on 
And let's see how far off it is on the bottom. We'll have to bring our light. See, there you go. It's coming off. We see a centimeter. We could have done this a little bit earlier, but we didn't know. So now it's time to finish it. And it's still pretty tight, by the way. It seems like the old ring is really good at holding a spot. So there you go. You can see up close here. Wait, let me get the resolution in there for you. Okay. Also gives me a chance to hold a case in this area. There you go. That's probably going to start slipping off. But yep, we're forcing it off. And it still likes to be forced off. There you go. Off. Wow, that took, much, that took that much pressure just to get this bad boy on. I'm assuming it's going to be the same. And there is that ring there we were talking about earlier. That is our, our, our transmission uh, gear oil ring. I want to make sure it's not damaged because the worst thing to do is put it back in and it gets damaged. So. Great, we got it off now, awesome. So we're gonna clean it really well, and then we're gonna put it back in our new one. And no damage here. Other than the vice grip that we tried to grip it because we thought there was thread. So there was no thread other than the one that's made for the other side of it. So we're gonna take our unit back off, disassemble it, unfortunately. We have to go backwards in order to go forward. And was there any damage to the tool? Nope. Still retracts for our power drill and it came right back down because I guess it layered the second layer as well. So that's why I didn't actually just poke this one through. So yeah, oh, <laughs> 12 ton in order to move it up. I'm sure it can take a little lesser, but quite a bit amazing to see how much it took just to remove that bolt and we couldn't even hammer it out. I'm sure a vice grip will probably do it too, but we were already at that same path. There we go, let's go ahead and get back our lighting and we're going to start assembling back our CBT unit. All right, okay, so we got that off now. It's time to go ahead and pretty much prep everything ready here. So we're going to go ahead and get the head on afterwards. But for right now, we're going to go ahead and concentrate on taking off the CB2 cover back and then we're going to also put the dowel pins for it afterwards but the main thing is we got to carefully uh, lift off the transmission gasket so we can put this bad boy back in there and here is this thread so we'll kind of secure it in there for right now we'll clean this a little bit with our microfiber and let me go ahead and straighten up and that way we'll clean on Okay, here we go. We're getting everything straightened out. All right, we're gonna go and open our CBT back. And we didn't put any blue Loctite on here. We just kind of torqued it, so that was good. Again, the only concern is pretty much opening our transmission cover back. So let's go and get everything uh, screwed out. Get a socket here. Okay, there we go. We have an eight millimeter. We're gonna get our box here to put our screws back in, so we know exactly again where, pretty much where things are going. Okay. There we go. I was wondering where not disappear to. There we go. We're gonna put everything back into our CB2. Uh, box there Okay, see me take it off pretty much you remember the pattern already We're just gonna go and start from top here Lefty loosey righty tidy We go and unloosen all of them first And then we're just gonna go ahead and make a long extension and work it Just 
got to go backwards a step, but it's good to actually see within 24 hours how did the blue Loctite actually, you know, feel and held up. Now we also put blue Loctite on our our clutch nut as well as our bell ray nut, which uh, we might have to take the variator off as well in order to get to the belt. So. Extension is as easy, especially when you're working and the covers near it. You got the extension. Lift up too. And these are aluminum, so be really careful uh, not over tightening it. I want to show you what happens, like with the stud that I over tighten. It definitely should actually follow the torque specs uh, for the same the studs. They should be about seven pound. When you over tighten it, there you go, I'm gonna show you this. Look, this is what happened when you over tighten your stud. You see that right there? I cranked this again with all my might. I used the, you know, the stud remover slash installer. And I didn't realize that this is the damage it caused. So you just want to be really careful if you're doing the same thing. Try to get the light. That way, see so you can see that right there, that crack mark. That's that's pretty much from the thread being forced further deep in than it should be. So these threads right here are left for the left side crankcase. The bevel edge usually pretty much doesn't go all the way halfway. Uh, maybe halfway, but not all the way more than halfway. And when you do that, it causes that. Luckily. The, that is the only damage from uh, pretty much the old crankcase. So, but that's probably easy repairable. We can put a little bit of JB Weld, kind of sand it down so the JB Weld will grip. And you can see here, and this one, there is no signs either. Even though we pretty much tested it out, tightening it with the two lug nets as well as are with our um, stud remover slash installer and they're nicely in there so those are probably going to be in there for some time so we finally got that out of there can you believe that it took that long i believe it was coming out from this hole right here this is the one this is the one that's going to transmission this one just goes in the open uh, i guess for you connect your again brake shoes will actually clamp on this little metal piece right here but since ours is disc brake, it doesn't use brake shoes. It's pretty much the wheel itself has a disc. And it just used the hydraulic uh, brake fluid. That's, that wouldn't apply to us, but we still need to put it in there to seal our pretty much our gear oil 